Hey guys, Madison here, and today I am reacting to Poseidon Adventure. Fun story behind this one. So I was trying to come up with some fun summertime movies to put on the poll, and as I often do, I ran it by my mom. I was like, what are some fun summertime movies? And she was like, oh, you need to watch Poseidon Adventure. And I'm like, what is that? I've, I've never even heard of it. Genuinely had never even heard of it. So I looked it up and I was like, Gene Hackman, this looks like a really interesting cast. But I read nothing about it. I saw the poster. I get that it's some kind of boat, ocean movie, adventure. <laughs> but I know nothing about the plot. So this is going to be a fun blind watch for me. Gene Hackman, I have only seen him play villains. I've seen him as the villain in The Quick and the Dead and Unforgiven with Clint Eastwood. God, I love that movie. Oh. But I've only ever seen him as a bad guy, so I'm wondering if this movie will finally break the trend. Will Gene Hackman, in fact, be a hero in this movie instead of a villain? I am looking forward to finding out. But first, a quick reminder. If you have not signed up for my online signing for my debut novel, Gone Outlaw, that's going to be happening sometime early to mid-July. And if you don't get your order in probably I would say by like first week of July. It might not be included in the signing because I'm going to order them pretty immediately right after my book comes out. So click the link below if you want to get a signed copy of Gone Outlaw because like I said I'll be ordering the books like pretty immediately right after Gone Outlaw comes out in those next couple days and so if you don't get your order in by I would say get all orders in by July 7th because if you don't it will probably not be it will probably not make it into the signing so make sure you get yours in if you want a signed copy or several signed copies and yes I can't wait I can't wait guys it's like two weeks two weeks until Gone Outlaw comes out <sighs> I've been waiting for this for so long because I announced it many months ago back in January six months out from release and it's, it's been both a very long six months, and it also feels like it's flown by at the same time. It's pretty crazy. I have been so blown away by the support you guys have shown my creative endeavors. Not just my videos, but my first novel has just meant the world to me. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for ordering, and I hope you enjoy reading Gone Outlaw as much as you've enjoyed watching my videos. But before I get too sappy and probably start crying, let's jump into this week's reaction and let's check out the Poseidon Adventure because, I mean, epic title, epic cast. I'm excited about this one. Ready? Let's go on an adventure. Always a novel, every time. Oh my. On New Year's Eve too, that's terrible timing. Happy New Year! <laughs> so this is gonna be like the Titanic. Who survives? Joe, what the hell's going on down there? Is there nothing more you can do with those stabilizers? There's nothing wrong with the stabilizers, so there's nothing more I can do with them. You know damn well what the trouble is. It's that bastard Lenarcos. Would you care to repeat yourself? He's standing right here. God, I hope he hurt me! Where the devil did you come from? From my cabin, sir. And these waves don't bother you, huh? I've surfed up to 18 feet, but these look more like 30. <laughs> that last one almost broached us, Lenarcos. I warn you, we are top heavy, and when that pump is repaired, I am taking on more ballast. Gosh, the camera angles of this, the way it's moving, makes me feel like I'm on a boat. Three quarters of the passengers are sick, Mr. Rogo. We have to take them in rotation. You mean to tell me we had to wait all this time just for you to come in here and, and, and kiss her off with a couple of pills and some crap about staying in bed? And how the hell is she going to swallow them pills when she can't even swallow water? Oh, they're suppositories, Mr. Rogo. Uh, you don't swallow them. <laughs> A 
Well, this guy doesn't have uh, seasickness. <laughs> Good morning. Don't fall over. <laughs> He's lonely. That's why he runs, so he won't notice. Hey, it says here there's a pen. When we finally get to Israel, we're gonna stay put, no traveling. We're gonna get to know our grandson. He's two years old already, he's talking. We've never even seen him. Get down on your knees and pray to God for help. And then maybe everything will work out fine. You could wear off your knees praying to God for heat in a cold water flat in February. And icicles would grow from your upraised palms. Somewhat unorthodox, wouldn't you say, Reverend Scott? But realistic. Hell, I had to look it up the map to find out where I was going. <laughs> oh, my bishop doesn't know it, but he's given me exactly what I wanted. Freedom to dump all the rules and all the trappings. And freedom to discover God in my own way. You still want me to give that guest sermon this afternoon? Well, one thing's for sure. Nobody's going to sleep through it. <laughs> what an introductory conversation. I demand we dock Monday night. And I can't afford to gamble with the lives of my passengers. Your business is to deliver this ship where we want it, when we want it. I am sure I don't have to remind you of my legal right to have you relieved of command. So oh, he's the rich businessman who's all about the money, and he's like, screw the passengers. There's got to be a morning after. Morning after. Oh, I can't take this stuff. Give me a Strauss Walls anytime. Mother and I waiting impatiently your arrival. Our thoughts and our love with you on this New Year's Eve, Dad. These two kids are on this ship alone. Why don't you shove it? Don't you ever say that to me again. Shove it, shove it, shove it. God is pretty busy. So it's not reasonable to expect him to concern himself with the individual. God wants brave souls. He wants winners, not quitters. Resolve to let God know that you have the guts and the will to do it alone. Resolve to fight for yourselves and for others. And that part of God within you will be fighting with you all the way. He's an unusual preacher, that's for sure. Why don't you admit the real reason? You're still afraid some bum will recognize you. You're out of that business now. You're my wife. Hmm, okay. You weren't on the streets that long. I don't know how many guys did you know? You don't have to shout. I said, do you realize how slow... I heard what you said! If it bothered me, I wouldn't have married you. Well, first you arrested me six times. Well, I had to figure out some way to keep you off the streets until you'd marry me. Come here, you lousy guy. Well, that's an interesting relationship. The cop and the prostitute. <laughs> what is the little green one for? That's uh, alfalfa, Mrs. Rosen. It's essential to uh, blood formation, the neural function, and growth. The growth part doesn't work. All you need is a pretty wife. I'd like to be married, Mrs. Rosen. I just can't seem to find a time. Mr. Tinkham, are you married? Oh, no marriage for me, Mrs. Rosen. I've got a mistress. What? The sea. Hey. He was ready for that punchline. <laughs> the great god Poseidon, in Greek mythology, the god of the seas, also god of storms, tempests, earthquakes. And a very bad omen for us. You know, it's the first vacation we had since we got married. Yeah. And why we didn't fly, I'll never know. What do we drink to? To love. To love? love. To love, dummy. Oh. And I'm the hotel manager. <laughs> Susan, would you like to dance? Did she recognize the preacher? Or was she crushing on the preacher? He's way too old for her. <laughs> Are we all batting down? Tight as a button, sir. Drum roll. Here we go. Happy New Year! It's the most ominous Happy New Year I've ever seen. 
It seems to be piling up in those shallows. By the way, Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Same to you. You know, last time I said the kids are safe, I was watching Jaws, and the kids were definitely not safe, so I don't... I don't hold to that rule anymore. <laughs> what is it, look up? On the port bow. I don't know, I, I never saw anything like it. An enormous wall of water coming towards us. This is bad. Real bad. Oh my god. <gasps> This is why I've sworn off cruise ships. Never. Are they gonna flip over? How does anyone survive that? Well, people are probably dying right and left already. Holy crap. They're just gonna be sitting upside down. I can't. Guys, this is like my worst nightmare. I don't know if I'm gonna make it through this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this is like on the abyss levels of anxiety. How does the whole thing just not flood with water? Oh my gosh, guys. Linda? It's okay. Linda, honey. You alright? Hi. Terrible. Please. Go to what? Stations. <laughs> Can you help me? What are you doing up there, sis? That's a stupid question. All right, hold on. Come on, Susan. <sighs> and another one bites the dust. Do you think it might be a better idea if we went up? What the hell are you talking about? I mean, it seems to me that any rescue attempt would have to come through the hull. You stay right there. We're coming up. Oh, wait a minute. How the hell are you figure to go through the bottom of the boat? Aft, sir, at the outlet of the propeller shaft. The third engineer, he told me that back by the shaft, the hull was only one inch thick. Didn't you hear what that purser said? He said to stay put and keep calm. Help will be here. I'm staying right here. Yeah, I don't think staying put is going to be a good idea. Come on, push! You're not going to be able to reach up high enough to push it up. You need a rope. Well. Alright, let's start climbing up. How? I need a monkey. Are you game? Yes, sir! Good boy. <sighs> then you just kick out the bottom and you swim ashore, huh? Well, maybe you can just yell, this is the police, and it'll open right up. Don't be a smart ass. She can't climb in that, it's too tight. She's got nothing under it! Just panties, what else do I need? What do you mean, what else do you need? <laughs> Come on. Linda. He, he's taking us up towards the engine room. Please, everyone, come Mr. this way. Mr. Martin, we're staying right here. All those people are probably going to die in a few minutes. We have to go right now. 
Mr. Scott, a fat woman like me can climb. Yes, you can. Do it. You can do it. There's something different up there than there is from down here? Yes. Life. Right, so I'll climb. Miss? I think you should come with me. Leave him. Oh, I can't. Nani? Your brother's dead. Did you like his music? I would have danced to it if I'd had somebody to dance with. I love Martin. Hey, I'm stuck. I'm stuck in this boat. Yes, yes you can. Come. <laughs> what's happening? What, what, what is that? What is it? What's down there? What? Oh. Ah. Excuse me for getting so familiar. What else could you do? Mrs. Peter Pan, I'm not. That's the way out. That's our only chance. Don't listen to him! Everybody's dead who was above us before the ship turned over. That's not true! It is true, you pompous ass. It's up to each one of you. It's up to all of us, together. Now, please, for God's sake, come with me. He knows nothing about this ship. The person Why don't you mind your own business? It's like when you're trapped in a cave and you're like, there's a hole right here. We can climb out. And everyone's like, no, we're going to wait for someone to come dig us out. And you're like, but what if it collapses before then? <laughs> I mean, take some action. If you stay here, you'll certainly die. We are staying with the Mercer. That's bad. Oh boy. What did I say? I knew they were all gonna die in just a few minutes. And they're gonna swarm the thing. Better back up, man. They're gonna pull you down with them. You tried, man, you tried. The ultimate plot twist of this movie is that I am rooting for Gene Hackman for the first time in my life. Well, sir, I don't know much about Below Deck, sir, but uh, there might be access from that area, yes, sir. The Ritz! You again? Well, that's way I went with my engineer friend. He called the Broadway when he took me down to see the boilers. Akers, is this the only way? Uh, yes, sir. Thank goodness for this preacher, or they would just be a chaotic mess without a leader. Gotta have someone to take charge in these kinds of situations. I think what I don't like about you. Scott is your attitude. Maybe we're two of a kind, Mr. Rogo. And you don't like looking at yourself. Uh, ah! It's all right, Mrs. Rosen. I have my dad pulling a 600-pound swordfish out of Hawaii. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This movie, guys. This leads to a central shaft? That's what I've been told, sir. They've got on the ventilation shaft. Oh, man. I'm not a very claustrophobic person, but that would definitely get to me. Would not be a fan of that. Oh, no. Get up the ramp. Just because that deck flooded doesn't mean this one will. I'm going next. So if old fat ass gets stuck in there, I will be caught behind her. She's so mean. Uh, Mr. Akers, would you mind, please? Yes, sir. Come along. We don't want to lose the others. You'll be right behind me. I don't like Martin being at the back. I like him too much. I don't want him to die. Is there not a way you can seal that off behind you so the water can't come in? 
Oh lord. Guess not. Uh, I need my comfort blanket this whole movie. I hope somebody doesn't fall in that. That would not be a fun way to die. This whole movie feels like just bad ways to die. <sighs> Man, she's in the worst shoes to be doing this. I feel like barefoot would be better. Although if you have to walk on something hot, that would be bad. Don't mind that, don't mind that. When I told you about Dad's 600 pound swordfish, I didn't want you to think I meant that you weighed that much. That's what you're worried about? Here you go. Oh. Don't look down. Martin, get your butt on that ladder. Ah! Oh my gosh. I thought that was thought that was boiling water. Ah, oh, shoot. Get up there, man. Well, I knew somebody was going in that water. Look! More people? Where are you going? We're following the doctor. Doctor! You're going the wrong way. The only way out is forward. Did you... Did you check the engine room? You're going the wrong way, damn it! This is really chilling. It's like people walking off a cliff and you're like, Hey, man, you're walking off a cliff. I'm telling you. It's like, no, this is the only way. And they just ignore you and they keep going. Walk right off the cliff. If all those people think they're right by going up there, maybe we should go with them. Twenty people decide to drown themselves, so that makes it all right. That's typical. Everything by the... Right! Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna go to the stern. To the engine room. And if it's possible, we're gonna do it my way. If not, we'll go forward. Wouldn't it be a good idea to look around, try to find some of the things we might need, like like food or anything that could help us? Yeah, sure, sure. Good. Splitting up is never a good idea. Mr. Scott. Why aren't you with the others? I feel safer with you. We can't get out this way. But we went by a lot of other passages, didn't we? And we're gonna look down every single one until we find that engine room, right? We're gonna come out of this. All of us. You are a good man. You're such a good man. <laughs> man, if that couple doesn't make it out, I'm gonna be sad. <laughs> How are they ever going to find their way back to the other people now? They're going to go so far looking. If I'm not back in five minutes, you go tell the others that I was wrong. Tell Mr. Rogo to do it his way. Look at that. A whole new idea of cutting hair. Raise him up, flip him over, let his hair hang down, then snip, snip, snip. Yeah, snip, snip, snip. <laughs> He's really dead. <laughs> Isn't he? At first, we don't think it's possible, but in time, you'll, you'll find other things. Someone else to care for you. You'll see. We've been wasting time sitting here while we should have been up front with those other people. Now, come on, let's go. Wait a minute. After all he's done for us, let's move it. I found it! Huh? I've been there. <laughs> Do you hear me, Rogo? I've seen the engine room. Wait, where's Robin? Robin! 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 Robin. Robin. Oh, great. Robin! Robin, come in! Oh, 
Oh my god. To the engine room. I went through it. Yeah, but now it's underwater. All right, so we'll swim through it. Give me the rope. I'll swim through the bulkhead, down a short corridor, and up a companionway. It's not, not more than 35 feet at the most. <laughs> oh, we can do it. Look, I was the underwater swimming champ of New York. Three years running. I held my breath two minutes and 47 seconds. Are you serious? I think I'm perfectly capable of holding my breath long enough to swim 35 feet. Oh, these kinds of scenes stress me out so much. <laughs> Guys. I feel like I have to hold my breath. Hope we didn't film this the Tom Cruise way. How long is this corridor? She's gonna die saving him. No, I like her. <sighs> oh my gosh. You see, Mr. Scott, in the water, I'm a very skinny lady. Ah. Uh. What is she? What happened? Hold on, Mrs. Rosen. Just hold on. Please, dear Scott. Enough is enough. Give this to Manny. Tell him he has to give it to our grandson. Life always matters very much. What is happening? Is she having like a heart attack or something? You gotta be kidding me. Not this woman. Mrs. Rosen should have survived. That was an unnecessary death. I object. I object wholeheartedly to this. I mean, she made it. <sighs> Rogo! <laughs> What if Rogo does like CPR? Something. I refuse to accept it. I got trapped. Mrs. Rosen freed me. Go back and get the others. What'll I tell him? Tell him nothing! Just go back and get him! I had a lot of guts, lady. She got through. She saved the preacher. She cleared the way for all of us. But, but something went wrong, didn't it? Well, like I told you, she did everything. Mr. Rosen, follow that rope! Before you know it, you'll be right in the engine room. It is above water, like the preacher said. Well, now, come on, you kids first. I can't swim. What? You can't swim? No. Ugh. Why don't we stay behind? We don't have to follow the others, we don't. Yeah, you do. You really won't leave me. I'm not going without you. I just have to hold my breath. That's, That's all. all. And, and don't let go of me. No, I won't. <laughs> Bye. You're right, huh? Mrs. Rosen is dead. We can't bring her back, but what we can do is keep moving and be strong. That's what she would have wanted. You too, Mr. Rosen. No. My place is here with her. The last thing she said to me was, give this to Manny to give to our grandson from both.
both of us. If you don't come with us, her death is meaningless. All right. But you'll go first. I want to stay with her just a while longer. Manny, you get up. You come on. This way, Mr. Rosen! This way! This is stressing me out how far behind Manny is. Oh, I swear if they both die. <sighs> Something bad's coming, I can feel it. That's just one more door and we're home! Had me all worried about Manny, and then Linda just falls out of nowhere. What more do you want of us? We come all this way, no thanks to you. We get it on our own, no help from you. We didn't ask you to fight for us. But damn it, don't fight against us. Leave us alone. How much more blood? How many more lives? You want another life? Take me! The upper body strength, man. I could never. <laughs> you can make it! Keep going! Sit back here, you can't help him now! No! Get out of here! Stop. Sit back here! He's alive. He's alive. He went through into the water. He's gonna come out. He's gonna come out. He is. What kind of a policeman were you? You've done nothing but peace and complain. Well, now's your chance to do something positive for a change. All right, you. That's enough. Scott's not dead. <laughs> He's not. I refuse to believe it. It's a fake out, it's a fake out. He's gonna, he's gonna appear and it's gonna be his big heroic moment. Come on. I will not believe he's dead unless this movie ends and he still didn't come back. My God, there's somebody out there. How many of you down there? Six. Did you save anybody else? Anyone from the bow? No. So all those people who went to the bow died too. No, don't fly away. <laughs> what about Scott? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I was so sure, guys. I was so sure. <laughs> well, I feel like I have failed as a music listener because I did not realize the entire movie that that 
score was composed by John Williams. John Williams strikes again with another great theme. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm so glad that several of my favorites made it, but two of my favorites did not. Scott and Mrs. Rosen. Uh, man. Gene Hackman was a force of nature in this movie. He was fantastic. He has such a strong on-screen presence. And it was so nice, so fun getting to root for him in this movie. Because I've never gotten to root for him before. I'm always hating his guts and wanting him to die. <laughs> and in this one, I'm so upset because he died. His performance was just so strong and so compelling he was just this driving force keeping everyone going forward throughout the movie just such a strong personality and he had such an interesting conflict going on because he was a preacher but he had this deep-seated grudge against God like God's not going to help me. There's no point in praying. I've got to do this myself. I've got to save myself. Which the whole message of Christianity is that you cannot save yourself. That God has to save you through the death of his son on the cross. And Scott was all about saving himself and saving everyone else. Like if we don't take action, if we don't... Like when he was shouting, you know, if we, we've done all this ourselves, you haven't done anything... And, you know, you haven't lifted a finger to save us, so don't fight against us either. And it was just, I don't know what had happened in his life, his, the life experiences of this character, that he had this grudge and this bitterness of, like, I'm a preacher, but I can't count on God. It was very, it was very strange. You wonder why he became a preacher if he has this extreme anger towards God and it makes me wonder if he became a preacher a long time ago and then something happened in the last few years, like he lost someone or something happened that gave him this bitterness. It's really interesting to think about, but it was a really just compelling conflict throughout the movie and watching him trying to save people but them refusing to be saved um, refusing to climb up the Christmas tree until it was too late, going to the bow when it was going to lead them to certain doom. They were determined to walk off that cliff anyway. I might be reading too much into this, but it felt like a picture of how any preacher would feel uh, preaching the gospel to anyone who's not listening, who refuses to listen, and they're continuing on to certain death and certain damnation and the Preacher can't do anything to save them. It's out of his hands. He's screaming the truth at them, but they won't listen. They continue, again, going off that cliff and not listening. And it, it felt like the whole scenario felt like a metaphor for that. And again, I could completely be reading into that, but that was how it felt. And it, because it, it felt intentional with them making his character a preacher that, you know, missions being his goal in life. He's been sent off to this country in Africa where he's supposed to be a missionary. And that's his goal. And it it feels intentional making him the leader of this group, almost like the, the shepherd of the sheep, right? Who need a leader to show them the way out, to guide them because they're they're scared, they're panicking, they're not thinking straight. They need a leader, right? They need... It felt very much like a shepherd and the sheep situation. And then you have the the ones who are wandering off and the ones who are going the wrong way. And he's screaming at them, this is the way out. Look, there is a way out. There's a path to life right here. And yet they refused to take it until it was too late. It was really two pictures. You had the people with the Christmas tree where they just were like, no, we're going to stay here where it's safe. Um... And then they do choose to follow him, but it's too late. They choose the way out, but it's too late. And then there's the people who just refuse to listen. And they're like, we're going to the bow. This is the right way. This is the way out. But there was only one way. There wasn't, there, there weren't multiple ways to survive. There weren't multiple true paths. There was only one path out. And unfortunately, only very few found it. 
So one thing I have to say is I really enjoyed everyone that was in this main group trying to survive. I actually cared about every single one of them. And I got upset every time someone died. And that is a success, major success on the part of the writing. That not only did I care, but I cared very quickly. Sometimes it takes me a while to really start caring about a character. But this movie got me on board very quickly with getting invested in the characters, interested in their life stories, where were they going and why, and who were they. I cared about every single one of them. I even got sad when the, the injured guy with the, the leg fell into the water. I, I, and we hadn't, we knew him the least out of all the group. And they just, they were all likable. Rogo was the least likable. He was the most confrontational, the most argumentative. So I was getting frustrated with him for fighting with Scott so often because it was like, you know, the two alphas butting heads. But even he was quite likable in that he was a a brave cop who was willing to take up the, the leadership mantle when Scott died. Um, and he was willing to sacrifice himself. Like, he jumped in. Can't remember the guy's name. When the injured guy fell into the water and died, he Rogo did jump in and try to save him. He was willing to lay his life on the line for someone else. And even though he was argumentative and, you know, kind of um, hard-headed and, yeah, just argumentative with Scott, he was still very likable as a person who was who cared about the people around him wanted to protect them, keep them safe, and he was brave. And there was this wonderful soft spot in him where Linda, like, with her past occupation, he was willing to overlook all that because he loved her. And that was a really beautiful thing between the two of them, and I hate that they got separated. <laughs> and that was probably the most heartbreaking moment of the movie when the they're about to get the, them out at the end, and you could there was a shot of everyone's faces individually and they're happy to get out, but you could see the heartbreak as they look back and as they remember, oh, I'm getting out, but I'm getting out without this person. Like Manny's like, I'm getting out without my wife. Rogo's like, I'm getting out without Linda. And they're all thinking about who they just lost. And so the joy of escaping is dulled because they're thinking, oh, now I've survived and now I have to face life without this person that I love. It's really tragic. <laughs> this was just so much more than I knew I was in for. Like, when I heard the Poseidon adventure, I was like, yeah, fun boat adventure. <laughs> like, I mean, I thought things, obviously things are going to go wrong on an adventure and things are going to get intense. But this was on a whole nother level of intense than I was prepared for. <laughs> oh my goodness. I've told you guys many times in the past, I have a fear of like open water I have int intentionally avoided cruise ships and going out on boats in the ocean my entire life. I've been on boats in the lakes. That's that's different. I'm okay being in a boat on a lake. But there's something about being out in open water. I just have a fear of that. <laughs> I have a huge fear of sharks. You'll, you'll see that very viscerally if you check out my reaction to Jaws from last year. But, oh my gosh, this one was just hitting all the fear buttons for me. I was just engaged and terrified for these characters. You can't help like putting yourself in their shoes in movies like this. It's very much like horror movies where you're putting yourself in the character's shoes and you're like, what would I do if I was in this scenario? Would I be able to survive this? Would I be able to do this? Like, I think the hardest part for me would have been the swim, holding my breath that long. I don't know if I could do it. It felt so long when they were all swimming through. I was sitting there going, I wonder if I could hold my breath that long. Because when you're nervous, too, and you're scared, it's harder to hold your breath than if you're, like, completely relaxed. So that was the part where I was like, I don't know. I hope I would have been able to do it, but who knows. That, so that was the part where I was like, I wonder if I would have been able to do that. Um, but yeah, this is Rosen. That was the most heartbreaking death for me. Just I wanted her to get to see her grandson. But Scott, too, because I was just, I was rooting for him so hard. He was such a great, again, just strong leader the whole movie. You couldn't help but root for him, even though he was very, uh, 
I don't know if arrogant is the right word, but maybe he, you know, it, it, his unshakable confidence in himself was his like greatest strength and also his greatest weakness because it, he was like, it's my way or the highway. It was about proving himself in a way. But that strength kept everyone together and moving forward. So, yeah, his... Oh, man. What a great movie. <laughs> what a great movie. I mean, I feel like I could talk about it for a long time, but I'm I'm almost curious, like, what happened to these people, you know? Um, and it didn't need it. It didn't need it. But I could have... I would have been okay with, like, five minutes at the end just seeing where all the characters went and what they did right after they escaped, you know, like seeing Manny get to Israel and seeing his grandson. I mean, it would have been heartbreaking, but, um, yeah, that's how much I cared. I, I cared. And man, the, the cinematography too, I was like wondering if I was going to be able to get through this movie at first, to be honest, because the, the way the camera was tilted like diagonally in every shot and it was like slowly moving and I was like, oh Lord, because I, <laughs> I get motion sickness very easily um, and I was like, am I going to be able to watch this movie because I'm literally feeling like I'm on the ship and it's rocking but I got okay as I, I kind of got used to it. Probably about like 20 minutes in, I started getting used to it. And I was like, I can do this. <laughs> but at first I was like, oh. But that was a credit to the cinematography because I felt like I was there. I felt like I was on the ship and I was riding the waves and I was like, I, I was there. And that's when a movie has just really really succeeded when you just you feel like you're there you care about the characters and it's just com completely intense and <laughs> anxiety inducing oh my gosh but I, I'm so glad that so many of them did make it I was afraid like sometimes it's like two or three people survive and everyone else dies a good number of them made it but it was just heartbreaking because the couples were getting broken up like Manny and Val and Rogo and Linda, like, the two couples got split up. Only one half of them made it. And so that was sad to watch. But at least Martin made it. I did love him. I loved him a lot. He was just, he was not the leader. But he was a quiet leader in that he really took care of Nani the whole movie. And that relationship was really sweet. I was, like, totally shipping it. <laughs> that was a really uh, sweet uh, thread running throughout the movie watching him just quietly but th th this quiet strength of taking care of her and leading her when she was feeling like she couldn't go on I loved that and I loved the fearless kid Robin <laughs> who knew the layout of the ship because he was like a you know a nerd about ships and had learned from the engineer I that was fantastic it was the Again, with, like, the faith allegory, it felt like the the childlike faith that is needed to survive and get through. He felt very much like a metaphor for that, him and his older sister. Uh, I liked both of them a lot. Um, yeah, just really fantastic movie. Really, really enjoyed it. And, oh, I'm, I'm like, tired now. <laughs> that movie wore me out. But, oh my gosh, I cannot believe, thanks again to my mom. Everybody thank my mom, <laughs> because I had never heard of this movie. I kid you not, had never even heard of it, knew nothing about it. And she was like, you need to put this on the poll. And boy, am I glad that I did, because that was a fantastic movie. I hope you all enjoyed this reaction. If you want to see the full-length version of this reaction, the link is in the description below. So check that out if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you guys next week for another Film Friday. Bye, guys.